Dear students, welcome back to Geography class. Last class, we discuss about the pressure gradient. Till here only we completed about isobars and all. Gradient is steep. If the isobars are closely spaced, there the pressure variations you already found. Now, we can discuss about the factors affecting atmospheric pressure. As you all knowing that the movement of air always from high pressure area to low pressure area. Also we found that according to the altitude, latitude, direction will change pressure also will change. Here we can see the first factor, altitude. 1 centimeter of mercury we are finding or measuring the pressure. It decreases for every 110 meter rise, the high altitude according to the height. Okay. One centimeter mercury of height means uh, while uh, you know the pressure gradient always mercury is expanding and uh, contracting it is decreases for every 110 meter rise air is thinner at higher altitudes and denser at lower altitudes few gas molecules at a higher altitudes results in fewer molecular collusions and a decrease in air pressure. While we are coming towards to the earth surface you can see that air molecules are tightly packed. While we are moving the higher altitude molecules are spaced. By because of that reasons there you can see that pressure is the higher altitude denser at the lower altitudes. The molecule corrosions are the decreases in air pressures. Then the temperature. You can see that the temperature. As temperature rises, it expands in the air and it rises causing a pulling in or nearby air. The low pressure. High, pressure, high temperature is there means creating low pressure. And a decreases in temperature causes pushing out of air due to high pressure. There is no doubt uh, influence of the temperature. Temperature is universally proportional to pressure. It is because with the rise in temperature, air gets heated and rises up. And its expands, it decreases, create a low pressure area. When temperature is low, the air becomes heavier and denser and uh, pressure become higher. Low temperature, high pressure. And uh, high temperature, low pressure creations. Okay. Now we can move to the third point, uh, water vapor. Humid air, warm air, displaces equal amount of dry air. Also molecular weight of water, 18 gram per molecules. It is lower than molecular weight of air, 29 gram molecules. So, humid air is lighter than dry air. The water vapor also depends upon the pressure. You know, high moisture, water vapor is there means pressure will change. Low moisture is there also, there also you can see that water uh, sorry the pressure will change humid air displays equal amount of dry air also molecular weight of water is lower than molecular weight of you know high humid air the weight of the air only pressure that you want to understand the weight of the air okay uh, air exert the pressure according to the temperature level then you can see the influence of rotation of earth on pressure. The rotation of the earth causes air at the poles to be pushed towards the equator. There is high pressure on the poles because of low temperature. 
because rotation the air coming down from poles occupies more space as it expands and its pressure falls. These low pressure belts are along parallels of 60 degree north and 60 degree south. Air always moves from high pressure towards to low pressure. Therefore, the air moves away from poles. Air moves in from the higher level to take its place. Most of the air at the poles are thrown to the equatorial regions due to the rotations of the earth along with the temperature differences to different altitudes. This creates pressure belts around the world. I think you got an idea about the influence of rotation of the earth. And the pressure, uh, you know, pressure belts also will change by because of earth rotation. Temperature will change, pressure will change from equatorial region to polar region. Already the influence of rotation of the earth. Why because of that reason only you can see that the pressure will change. Also you can see the Coriolis force and its effects. If the earth did not rotate on its axis, you know, the earth did not rotate on its axis, winds would follow the direction of the pressure gradient. Instead, earth rotation produces the Coriolis force, which tends to turn the flow of air, deflect, you know, deflect right in the northern hemisphere and uh, left in the southern hemisphere. The direction of the action of Coriolis force is state at Ferrell's law. Any objects of fluid moving in the northern hemisphere tends to be deflected to the right of its path of motion. In the southern hemisphere, a similar def, uh, reflection is towards the left. The Coriolis force is the absent at the equator, but increases as we go towards the poles. By because of that reasons, you can see that formation of pressure belts and also differentiating from uh, equatorial region, high low pressure center is there, belts are there. While we are moving towards the, uh, you can see temperate region and the frigid zone. Polar region, you can see that creating a high pressure. There are seven pressure wells, as you all knowing that. I already given the video also the, about the pressure wells. Here, I can show once again uh, the pressure wells video. It is very easy to understand. There are, you can see that. Uh, Middle, middle doldrums are there, middle equatory region doldrums are there. That is belong to uh, zero degree, you know, zero degree to five degree north and five degree south, usually like that only. But because of pressure variation, what happen till 10 degree south and north, it will uh, moves. The equatorial low pressure middle equatorial low pressure doldrums it is also known as doldrums extends 10 degree north and 10 degree south really 5 degree north and 5 degree south only but because of the variation in the pressure belts you can see that equatorial low pressure belts belong to 5 degree north towards to 10 degree north and 5 degree to uh, south towards to 10 degree south then you can see that the subtropical high pressure belt sec Second belt you can see that uh, subtropical high pressure belts belongs to 40 degree north to 40 degree south. Okay. You can see uh, that uh, low pressure subtropical low pressure belts uh, also I told you the doldrums temperature is high pressure is low density uh, you can see that according to the hot air is lighter. Then the next second pressure belts I told you subtropical high pressure belts 40 degree north to 40 degree south uh, subtropical high pressure. There you can see that it is also known as horse latitude. Low air cools down and uh, creating a high pressure compared to equatorial region. Cool air is densest. Then we can move to the next pressure belts. Polar, subpolar low pressure belts. 
subpolar low pressure belts belongs to 55 degree and uh, 60 degree north to south hemisphere. The subpolar low pressure there you can see that uh, temperature is low, low because of the earth rotations, pressure also going to low, less dense as the bulk of air moves towards the subtropical and polar regions. Here once again you can see that uh, first uh, pressure belts, uh, equatorial low pressure belts already I told you 0 degree, five, no, 0 degree equatorial region towards to 5 degree north and south without uh, pressure belt variation. Vertical rays of the sun is there, intense heating, low pressure zone creating a low pressure zone, lack of breeze also called uh, doldrums. Then you can see that subtropical high pressure belts 30 degree north and south. Your book some changes is there, there is no problem. 40 degree north to 40 degree south also because of pressure belt variations usually reaching. And here you can see that the ascending equatorial air and descended here two parts. High pressure zone creating high pressure zone from equatorial region you can see. Uh, compared to equatorial region this subtropical high pressure region is uh, you can see that uh, high pressure also called uh, holes latitude it is also known as okay I think you understood Ida? Subtropical high pressure belts is also known as <coughs> sorry horse latitudes. Horse latitudes. You already studied the different latitudes, you know, equatorial region, temperate zone, and frigid zone. This area also belongs to this pressure belts. Now we can move to the a horse latitude, I told you the second pressure belt is trade winds towards equator and west release towards circum polar regions originates here. Here trade winds are also originating. Easterlies and westerlies, you know, in this region you can see the easterlies wind. Easterlies wind or trade winds. The next belt already I told you subpolar low pressure belts subpolar low pressure belts that is belong to 50 55 degree you know 55 near about 55 degree north and south latitude maximum it reach to 55 degree north and south of the hemisphere northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere okay subtropical high pressure is completed third subpolar low pressure belts the subpolar low pressure belts is lies in 55 degree to 60 degree north and south owing to low temperature in these latitudes the subpolar low pressure belts are not very pronounced. These are dynamically produced by the rotation of the earth on its axis. Okay, Maximum range is given here. According to your, your book it is given 55 to 60 degree north and south. A belt where westerlies and easterlies meet here, easterly winds and westerly winds meeting. The surface air spreads outward from the zone due to the rotation of the earth, which results into low pressure belts on the subpolar areas. Subpolar low pressure belts is more developed in the southern hemisphere than that in the northern hemisphere. The North Pacific. Aleutian low develops near the Aleutian Silence. North Atlantic, Icelandic low develops near the Iceland. Both these cells are dominant in winter and weaken significantly 
or disappear altogether in the summer with strengthening a high pressure in the subtropics. I already told you here meeting of the easterly winds, trade winds and anti trade winds. Warm air rises in this region. Violent storms during winter season. Violent storms. These are some important features you can see in subpolar low pressure belts. Now you can see that uh, fourth one polar high pressure belts. Polar high pressure belts. According to your book, it is given 75 to 90 degree north and south. 70 degree to 90 degree maximum north and south of the region. Extremely low temperature is there. Why? Because of low temperature, high pressure is there. Also called polar high pressure belts. Has permanent ice caps always covered by ice. Easterly is blowing winds are there. Okay. Here I can give a the video start generating wind from one direction to the other this already the video which follows i given through the you know i already given to you the pressure belts in this video we shall learn about the various pressure belts and wind patterns that have developed on planet earth while understanding the basic concepts behind the development of pressure belts, we will not take into consideration the date of the axis and the influence of land water distribution. The equator divides the globe into southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere and equatorial belt extend up to 5 degree north and 5 degree south. Equatorial region receives nearly vertical rays of the sun and this heats up the air near the equator. When temperature increases, pressure decreases. So, along the equator we have low pressure and we call this region as equatorial low pressure belt. The warm air starts rising up in the troposphere and as the warm air is rising, the temperature drops. After rising up to a certain point, it stops rising upwards because it becomes cooler and it is obstructed by tropopause. So, the air spreads out. The air starts moving in the southern and northern direction. As the air is moving, it becomes denser and after a certain point, it sinks down to the surface. So, at around 30 degree north and south, we have sinking air. This sinking air is cool air, so it forms high pressure systems. These regions are called as subtropical high pressure beds because these regions lie outside the tropical region and at the same time adjoining the tropical region. The sinking air now moves towards north and south. So, along the equator, the warm air rises, spreads out and cools and sinks down. In this way, it develops convectional currents. At the poles, the sun rays are very much inclined. So, we have cold air that sinks. These regions are known as polar highs. In the northern hemisphere, the air moves towards the south. And in the southern hemisphere, the air moves towards north. At this point, we have air coming from north and south. So, at this point, the air converges and rises up. These regions are known as subpolar lows. So, at 60 degree latitudes, we have low pressure system because we have rising air. Along the equator, the air is rising because of convection and at subpolar lows, we have rising air because of convergence. This rising air also spreads out, cools and sinks. Same things happen in the southern hemisphere. 
along the surface of the earth along the equator the winds move from high pressure regions to low pressure regions that is from subtropical highs to the equatorial low in the northern and southern hemisphere these winds bend to the right in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere the winds bend to the left and this is described as coriolis effect the winds bend to the right and left in the northern and southern hemisphere respectively because the earth is spherical in shape and the earth rotates from west to east in the same way in between 30 and 60 degree north and south the wind bends towards right and left in the northern and southern hemispheres respectively even at the polar region the same phenomena can be seen 